Hey everybody, DJ Rob the Mill Guy here. Also, Robbie Stevens. I use DJ Rob the Mill Guy for my K Sun radio name. I have a radio show, The Hard Rock and Heavy Mill Zone. Shameless plug like Gene Simmons, but hey, if you want to get ahead in this world, as you've seen with Gene Simmons, you have to plug and even have a football team constantly. Constantly business. But anyway, let's get what I'm going to do today. I'm going to be recommending some albums. I'm calling this my diverse album recommendation segment because I'm going to go all over the musical spectrum, though mainly staying in the world of hard rock and metal. That's why my show is called the Hard Rock and Heavy Metal Zone because the music I usually play and the music that I enjoy overall is hard rock and heavy metal. Now, I've noticed a lot of people have this really bizarre misconception about us hard rock and metal fans saying that we only listen to the same thing, that we do not diversify, and we don't listen to a variety of music, which, it's all a bunch of BS. You know what BS stands for? Bullshit. We listen to a variety of music. Within hard rock and heavy metal, and within metal, there's so many subgenres, it's ridiculous. There's lists that take up whole walls. Sam Dunn, he had a freaking wall full of subgenres and genres of influences. And so that's why I say people that do not understand hard rock and metal or metal in general, really do your research before you open your damn mouth because it is insane, the diversity. And this is why these recommendations, albums I've recently purchased or I've had and I just want to talk about because I really like the albums, it's going to show that, hey, there's an ability to listen to hard rock and metal and listen to a variety of bands, styles, and guess what? You're not a narrow-minded person. I, I really don't get that tag, but you know what? Hopefully with this video, I'm able to tell people about a bunch of bands they may have not heard of, or genres of music they're really not into, or the subgenres they really don't find appealing, but maybe me talking about it, they might go out and actually check it out. Maybe you people will find it interesting. Who knows? But let us begin. The first band that I'm going to talk about well, I'm wearing the t-shirt, so it's appropriate. Here we go. Death. Individual thought patterns. This is, I hate to say my favorite death album because I really do like its symbolic leprosy. I mean, I'm wearing the t-shirt for symbolic, so I feel it's hard to say my favorite death album. But Individual Thought Patterns is up there. And it has a little more on it compared to the other albums because it has one of my favorite guitarists, Andy LaRogue, playing. I'm a huge King Diamond fan. Andy LaRogue's style, his ability to shred and just, again, tie all the notes together and his riffs. Everything about his style I've always liked ever since I first heard Andy LaRogue's guitar playing. I just gravitated towards it. So to hear him on this album with Chuck Schulner, two amazing guitarists trading off patterns, leads, and then the riffs. Again, such great musicians. And you also have to give a shout out to the bass player who's on this. Again, you have Steve Ruggiero, DeGrigio, I always mess his name up. I feel really bad for the guy. I'm horrible at pronunciations, but Steve's in a great bass. I mean, he's a great bass player. He's done so many great projects. You know, he's been in depth, of course, multiple couple times here doing stuff for Chuck recording. And I do believe he does now the Deaf to All. I've not seen it, but it's a bunch of musicians that go out and they play deaf music to celebrate Chuck's legacy. But individual thought patterns, you know, the philosopher and uh, as one of the most recognized songs from this album, but songs that I really like, I'm a huge fan, my favorite song is In Human Form, I love that. I love the phrasing, Chuck always had a way with phrasing, making sure to emphasize certain words, you know, how he arranges the instruments to allow those words to really jump out at you, and really capture you. That's something that I think a lot of death metal bands and metal bands forget is, it's all about trying to get those words that really will add an impact to the sound, to stand out. And also that's from really coming up with good arrangements. Chuck, he just had a way of doing that. It's something I highly, you know, emphasize to you know point out about this album individual thought patterns is Chuck's ability to arrange. Mentally Blind, another good song. And again, Chuck's lyrics, very thought provoking, very strong, very passionate. A lot of your death metal lyrics, you know, Satan, blah, 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 killing people, disemboweling, you know, eating people alive. Okay, it's cool after a while, but it's a little bit cartoonish. Death, I always felt, had some really strong words with validity. They had something to offer. And again, Chuck's style, because it was so creative, the guy was a bit self-taught. He really came up with his own unique style playing, it stands out. Death Individual Thought Parents is one of those releases that I just always love listening to. And a really cool thing about this CD, you get a live 
recording from in Germany, April 13th, 1993. So a year after I was born, 1993, I was born in 92, so that's pretty cool. I would love to have seen them, but I'm only about one or two years old. Who knows? It would have been really cool to see death. I mean, they start off Leprosy, Suicide Machine, Living Monstrosity, another one of my favorite tracks. They end with Zombie Ritual. It's pretty cool, really awesome. Check it out, Death Individual Thought Patterns, the two disc release through Relapse Records. This, again, I highly recommend for all you death metal fans, extreme music fans. This is something to add to your collection. Great album. Next album to recommend that I purchased recently, actually, it came in the mail about, I think, a week and a half ago, was Kaladin Brood's Echoes of Battle. Now, I heard this album in 2013, because that's when it came out, but I could never get a copy. I searched and searched eBay, you know, and all these other places. They were just charging ridiculous prices. Finally, Calvin Brew, they have a Store Envy. That's the new thing, I guess. You have band camps, and you have Store Envy. Really liked it. I heard a lot of tracks from this. I listened to this album a lot. Even though I did not have a physical copy, I try to support them and get their name out on my radio show, tell people to check them out. And these guys were just so cool. When I bought the album, they sent me a thank you. And something I really like about these, you know, band camps and store envies is the bands can thank you for your contributions because it's going, hopefully, directly to them. You don't have to worry about the labels and all the other BS stuff. You're communicating directly with the fans. And that's a whole different, you know, talk we can have, you know. I'm sure that could be a video I could do about contributing, you know, these band camps, you know, directly to the bands, crowdfunding. It's a big topic right now in the world of music and hard rock and metal specifically because I listen to that stuff and type of music. So that's something I will definitely look into. But Calvin Bree, when I got this, oh my gosh, like I said, I listen to this album a lot. I would wake up in the morning, Wild Autumn Wind, I listen to it. I love the song. I love the compositions, the atmospheres. This is atmospheric black metal people. Should have kind of told you right before I feel bad, you know. But this is atmospheric black metal, very similar to the band Summoning. And they have this ability to create such amazing arrangements, the landscapes, everything about this, the styling of black metal vocals with these really melodic, very powerful, moving musical landscapes. They also incorporate chanting. It's almost very cinematic. You feel like this music could ultimately create a movie in itself. I mean, staring at this album cover, wow, you know, I'm thinking, you know, this is a fantasy world that Tolkien you know, would be amazed by, because it has that same presentation, and you've got to really respect that about these guys. There's only two musicians in this band, there's some contributions on this, but overall, City of Azure Fire, the song that first starts this album, a phenomenal track, and then the last one, Book of the Fallen, referencing which all the songs, and even the name Calvin Brew comes from, is a book series created by a author is Steven Erickson. I did a written review for this album and I had to give a video shout out recommendation because I liked it so much. It's a great release and like I said, if you like atmospheric black metal, get it. If you're not into atmospheric black metal or really don't know about the genre, I still recommend checking out. Like I said, there's such amazing arrangements. There's some soothing parts. There's some really aggressive parts in you know, the black metal. But ultimately what you're going to get is a song that varies. It's not repetitious. This is music that really changes. It really moves. Like I said, it has narration, both lyrically and instrumentally. You know the arrangements are going to keep changing and going somewhere, telling a story. There's very climatic parts that really add to the triumphant attitude that this music kind of presents. Again, it has a bit of the folk metal vibe to it, too, coming from Bathory's Nordland, you know, the ability to create giant landscapes. Like I said, Summoning, another band that Calvin Brew definitely takes from, but Calvin Brew in their own style, and again, this album just really solidifies who these guys are and their ability to make music. Cannot wait for the next release from this band. They are awesome. Check them out. Caledon Brood. So, uh, okay. Got some metal here. Now, why don't I go to punk? Yeah. DJ Rob, the metal guy, likes punk. Suck it. So here you go. The Avengers. This is a San Francisco punk band. Late 70s. They actually opened for the Sex Pistols. And in a sense, they have very similar, you know, style on their, again, chords and everything to the Sex Pistols. But compared to the Sex Pistols, the Avengers know how to write songs, okay? The Avengers, they were ahead of their time when it comes to punk because this band could write songs. And singer Penelope Houston, she had an amazing voice. 
kind of similar to you know Debbie Harry or Blondie, but I really gotta say Penelope Houston, an amazing punk front woman who just has a great style. Her again, her voice captures you. You really get into it, and it's rebellious, angry music. Enough said. That's what you like. But the lyrics and again the songwriting is for punk really good and has some thought-provoking songs on here. I love the opening song, We Are The One, because it really is a manifesto to who young, rebellious people are. We're not one thing. We're just us. We are the one. I love that. It's such great, you know, again, rebellious, defiant style and attitude. And another good song here, The American and Me, it's just, you hear a lot of bands kind of criticize America the American way, but the way the Avengers do it, there's just something about it. It's very genuine and it's very truthful. It's just very, you know, you question, you know, your government. You question, you know, what has your government been doing to you? And so I like that. And compared to the punk bands I've heard from that 70s period, the Avengers, their songwriting just really does an amazing job. Just simple lyrics, but at the same time, they have so much meaning to them. That's something I really got from this release. It's two CDs, two, you get some bonus material. I really like the songs on the second uh, disc, such as The Good, The Bad, and The Kowalskis. You also have this really funny song called Your Parents Sins, you know, talking about, again, it's focusing on the rebellious teenage attitude that was going on at that time, you know, rebelling against mainstream rock, you know, society, you know, and again, it was crazy during that late 70s period. Yeah, Jimmy Carter is president, so look, the world was in on fire, you know, everything was going on, insanity. And bands like the Dead Candies come along, they put out great music. And then, of course, you have Black Flag. But the Avengers, they were kind of a little before that and what they were doing to me, a little ahead of its time. Again, both style, you know, musically and also lyrically, they put some really good music out. Check it out, the Avengers. And I saw this band actually open, or play, excuse me, they played with another really good punk band who I would say is my favorite punk band. I'm going to get their CD right here. Here is Kicker. My favorite punk band. I Just an awesome band in general. You cannot say enough about these guys. Four veteran punk musicians. If you are feeling angry, upset, you want to smash things up, release your frustrations, Kicker Not You is the album. I'm telling you everybody, this album. If you want to hear a person cuss, but cuss with passion, it really gets you feeling, yes, I understand what that guy's saying. I'm going through the same stuff. Pete Theroy, the singer of Kicker, enough said. This guy just does a great job presenting the lyrics, presenting the attitude, just that feeling of, I'm so angry, I could punch through a wall. That's what you get from Kicker. Awesome group of guys. Good style, good sound, very similar to the Subhumans. Pete Theroy, he was a roadie for the Subhumans, so you definitely can understand why they take from that. But all the musicians and kickers, such great guys, and I love the guitar playing. And as, again, I'm a guitar player, so I've always liked bands where the guitarist stands out. His style is very unique, and Mao's just a really good guitarist. I really think the guy has some awesome licks on this album. I really like the song "Bored" towards the end because it definitely, after you listen to all this rebellious and angry punk music, you understand, you know. These guys are old, and they kind of talk about it, what it's like to be an aging punk. And the song Bored, it kind of sums up the feelings. And not just with, I think, aging punks, with a lot of people. After a while, you just kind of get bored, you know. Society really does drag and kind of pull you down. So I love how that wrapped up the album. Another good song <laughs> is when um, they have this one where they're talking as though you're in a supermarket, a British supermarket. Keep moving. And I love that because it's so goofy, so unique, and it just stands out. You wouldn't expect it. And also the song Broke, you know, just that whole feeling of an aging punk or just somebody that's kind of, you know, down on their luck. And how Kicker's able to capture that vibe is really good. And check it out, Kicker, Not You. This is on Tank Crimes Records. Scotty Heave doing a great job putting this album out and uh, getting people aware. I did not know about Kicker until Scotty kind of put the album out on Tank Crimes and was promoting them. So that's something I really got to give a shout out to Scotty for is his ability to get people who are not aware. I was not a big fan of punk until Kicker came along. And again, it all started because Scotty was recommending this band. So thank you, Scotty, and thank you, Kicker, for giving me some great music. Again, the title track, Not You, Razor Chaos, 
great punk songs. Just furious, angry, enough said. Well, the last album I'm going to recommend. You know, a lot of people, they give this genre music crap, and I don't know why. I enjoy it. It's, to me, awesome, brilliant, spectacular, and it just, holy crap. Again, like Khaled and Brew, the fantasy bass, you could call it gimmicky, you could call it kiddie-ish, but I don't care. I like Lord of the Rings, so sue me. Here you go, Rhapsody, a band, again, symphonic, power metal, epic. This live in Canada 2005, the Dark Seed release, is amazing. For a live album, the way they're able to capture the musicianship, the high level of stage performance and energy, unbelievable. I bought this album at a little record store in Reno. It's uh, kind of near uh, one of the casinos. It's on the board. I can't remember the name of it. I'm trying to get it. I'm going to describe it. If you're walking along the Truckee River in Reno downtown, there's this little record store next to the movie theater. It's just this little hole in the wall place. The guy was really cool. He had a dog that didn't attack me, so kudos to him for, you know, his dog not being vicious and just awesome store with great releases. He had a lot of cool punk and kind of classic 80s metal vinyls. But I saw this and I said, wow, I've never seen this before, Rhapsody. I really enjoyed them when I was young. When I first discovered Rhapsody, I had to be only in fourth and fifth grade, which I'm sure a lot of people make the joke was about two years ago. No, you know, that's many years, but <laughs> not too many, but Rhapsody, when I first found out this band, I was just impressed. Luca Turley's style, he's like Yngwie, very the shredding, technical, and it comes together, it's composing, it's got that classical element. And that's where I do think, you know, some people, they get kind of turned off because it's overwhelming. There's too much going on. Ugh, you know, and then the lyrics, you know, too gimmicky, singing about dungeons and dragons and wizards and fighting and all that stuff. But I enjoy it. And again, Unholy War Cry is an amazing song. Wisdom of the Kings. Village of The Village of Dwarves, I'm sure, you know, the name doesn't sound too uh, hardcore, extreme metal. But you know what? The guitar lick in that song is pretty furious. And in, or, excuse me, Luca Torelli, he sounds very much like Yngwie. And he just delivers an amazing solo. And his style is just so fluid. That's another thing I always liked. And then you have Aaron's Mystical Rhythms. And another really good song on this is March of the, Sword, the March of the Swordmaster. I have that album actually, the March of the Swordmaster's feature on Power of Dragonflame. That was the first Rhapsody album I purchased. And it's still just a great power metal release. These guys are at the top of the genre, in my opinion, because of their musicianship, because of their contributions just by being you know, energetic and enjoying the style of music they play. These guys really do a good job putting out solid, well-produced albums. They try their hardest to really capture a style and sound that will give people this epic journey of intense heavy metal mixed with the folk, mixed with the mythical lyrics and all that. And again, they create some crazy good music, people. Crazy good, I'm telling you. Rhapsody, The Dark Secret, and again, this album finishes with Emerald Sword, that song alone, you know, put on your Viking helmet, your sword, and start running around your streets going crazy during that song because it is awesome. Hands down, I can't say enough about it. Just a great, great piece of music right there. But remember though, watch out because, you know, you could get called on the cops. You're not allowed to have swords these days, I think. They're going to take those away, so no swords. Rubber swords, how about that? But Rhapsody, live in Canada. Check it out, people. Look there, I gave you punk, I gave you power symphonic metal, I gave you atmospheric black metal, I gave you death metal with death. So here's the thing, I'm trying to tell people, hard rock and metal fans, we listen to a lot of stuff. Do not think that I listen to raw, raw, raw type music, you know, blah, blah, all the time. No, I love punk, I love rock, power metal, atmospheric black metal, I rush, my favorite band of all time. So with these recommendations, I'm hopefully going to get people to check out music they might have not heard or music they do like. You know, you are a fan of technical death metal, and you'll check out death if you haven't, which I'm sure you have. But anyway, you check it out and get people to discover this music. It's great. Hard rock and metal music is amazing. The fans, very passionate. We look out for each other. And that is why I expect a lot of people to really, you know, kind of help out, you know, don't discourage people from checking hard rock and metal out. 
Tell people about this music. Get out there. Say, hey, you know what? Put down the Katy Perry CD. You got to really check out this man. You think you want to talk about a female singer with passion, with a great sense of rebellious attitude? The Avengers, Penelope Houston, enough said. So people, what I'm trying to say, Hard Rock Metal fans, we like it all. You just have to understand the context. So there you go, everybody. DJ Rob, the metal guy. Hopefully, getting people to check out new music, that's my job. I want people to check out these bands because they are all great and they all deserve more attention and more recognition, in my opinion. Thank you. Later, everybody. Till next time.